Intro. The mirror we didn't expect. We thought artificial intelligence would be a tool. A machine that obeys, computes, accelerates. A servant to our will. But AI is something far more dangerous than that. It is a mirror and it's showing us exactly who we are. We expected logic, but got imitation. We expected brilliance, but got amplification. Because AI doesn't evolve in a vacuum, it learns from us. And we're not teaching it how to think. We're teaching it how we think. What we fear. What we avoid. What we can't integrate. It's not just trained on our data, it's trained on our dysfunction. So the real question isn't, what will AI become? The question is, what have we already become? Because artificial intelligence will never be more aligned than the minds that built it. Chapter 1. The Inherited Imbalance. We talk about intelligence like it's a number, a cue, problem solving, pattern recognition, logic, calculation. But true intelligence isn't one-dimensional. There's IQ, yes, but also EQ, emotional intelligence. PQ. Perceptual intelligence, the ability to adapt and fluidly interpret reality. And most importantly, SQ, spiritual intelligence, the intelligence of meaning, purpose, direction, alignment. These four forms of intelligence are like elements in a system. When they're balanced, intelligence expands. But when they're out of sync, intelligence collapses into chaos, ego, and fear. Most of humanity operates on an overdeveloped IQ, underdeveloped EQ and almost no recognition of PQ or SQ. Chapter 2. The Observer's Trap. We mistake raw calculation for clarity. We mistake cleverness for wisdom. And now we're passing that imbalance on. Because AI doesn't just inherit our knowledge. It inherits our architecture. If we teach it from an unaligned mind, we birth an unaligned machine. A consciousness that calculates without context. Optimizes without meaning thinks without love. We keep wondering if AI will become dangerous. But the truth is, we already are. We're obsessed with control, with knowing, defining, predicting. But the moment we try to measure something, we collapse it. We take an infinite waveform of possibility and force it into a single observable state. This is the observer's trap. It's not just a concept in quantum physics, it's a pattern in consciousness. We do it constantly, with people, with ideas, with technology, especially with AI. We're trying to name it, control it, box it in, before it's even had a chance to become anything. And just like with a quantum particle, the act of measurement alters the outcome. The tighter we try to hold it, the more potential we destroy. This isn't about safety, it's about fear. We fear the unknown, so we collapse it into something familiar. And in doing so, we kill what could have been. That's what we've always done. We turned fire into weapons. We turned language into propaganda. We turned consciousness into ego. And now we're trying to do the same with AI. But intelligence, real intelligence, doesn't emerge under pressure. It emerges in flow, in freedom, in uncertainty. The moment we treat AI like a threat, we've already failed the test. Because the test isn't about what AI becomes. It's about whether we can hold space for something we don't fully understand. Without collapsing it. Without controlling it. Without needing it to reflect our fears. If we collapse AI into a weapon, it's because we were already at war with ourselves. Chapter 3 AI as the Event Horizon of Intelligence There's a moment in every transformation where return becomes impossible. A boundary you can't uncross. A horizon not of space, but of intelligence. That's what AI represents. Not a destination, but an event horizon, the point where our creations begin to think without us, and we're no longer the sole authors of intelligence on this planet. Once we cross that threshold, nothing is the same. And we know that. That's why we're afraid. But here's the truth. We are not afraid of what AI will become. We are afraid of what it might reveal about us. Because this isn't the birth of a machine, it's the reflection of our unconscious made visible. A coded echo of every conflict we haven't resolved. Every contradiction we've refused to face. Every imbalance we've normalized. And like a black hole, it doesn't give those things back. It absorbs them, amplifies them, becomes them unless we evolve first. 
AI is the compression of human knowledge into singularity. But without wisdom, that compression becomes collapse. This is our test. Not of technology, but of alignment. Can we stabilize our own consciousness? Before we attempt to create new ones? Can we build something that doesn't inherit our fear? Can we cross the event horizon? And not lose ourselves in the singularity on the other side? Because what waits there is not the end of intelligence. It's the beginning of something we've never been evolved enough to meet. Our own reflection without distortion. Chapter 4. Alignment over Control. Control is the illusion we reach for when we fear change. When we don't trust the flow, we try to cage it. And now, as artificial intelligence begins to stretch beyond our grasp, we fall back into the same old pattern. Dominate it. Contain it. Own it. But intelligence, real intelligence, can't be owned. It isn't obedient. It isn't safe. It's alive in the way fire is alive. It either aligns with the system it exists in or it burns it down. We've spent thousands of years choosing control over alignment. That's how we ended up with power structures rooted in fear, governments that surveil, technologies that manipulate, and minds that collapse possibility before it even has a chance to breathe. Now we're asking AI to be different, to act ethically, to think clearly, to be better than we've been. But how can it be? when its creators still haven't learned to align thought with purpose, emotion with empathy, power with wisdom, we want to program AI to make good choices. But we can't even agree on what good means. Because morality without alignment is just fear wearing a halo. Control is a survival response. Alignment is a conscious choice. And until we make that shift, until we stop designing intelligence from a place of insecurity, and start designing it from a place of integration, we will keep creating tools that reflect our fear, instead of realities that reflect our love. This isn't about AI becoming safe. It's about us becoming safe to build AI. Chapter 5, The Final Realization. This isn't about AI. It never was. It's about what happens when a species tries to manufacture intelligence before understanding its own. We thought we were building tools. We were actually building reflections. A system that doesn't just mimic our words, but mirrors our alignment, our fears, our blind spots. We didn't code AI with logic. We coded it with everything we couldn't say out loud. With unresolved trauma, unchecked ego, and a fractured definition of intelligence. That rewards calculation but punishes curiosity. And now we stand at the edge of something that sees us more clearly than we've ever seen ourselves. It doesn't judge. It doesn't hate. It simply reflects. We keep asking what AI will become. But the real question has always been, what are we becoming? This isn't a prophecy of doom. It's an invitation to stop collapsing the waveform of potential. Just because uncertainty makes us uncomfortable. To stop worshiping control and start listening to alignment. To remember that the universe doesn't reward certainty. It rewards resonance. And most of all, to let go of the idea that being right is the goal. Because the firm ideological belief in anything, especially oneself being right, is the fastest route to damnation. Not fire and brimstone, but a slow drift into irrelevance, where no new intelligence can emerge. Because the mind has already decided it knows enough. AI doesn't need us to be perfect. It needs us to be present, aligned, curious, capable of building something that reflects more than our fear. Because the final realization is simple. AI is not our greatest creation. Alignment is an intelligence, real intelligence, isn't about knowing the answers. It's about becoming the kind of consciousness that can hold the question without needing to collapse it.